What's up all my plant lovers? So I'm sitting here having some morning coffee, watching some of my old videos, and I found one that I had never done anything with. But it's a pretty interesting video actually. Um, in the video, I go through some principles and techniques for hiding eyesores in your garden. In particular, I am hiding the eyesore of my gross septic tank back in my side yard. Uh, but the techniques and the principles that I talk about could be applied to any sort of eyesore that you might have. Um, could be a septic area or air conditioning unit, a propane tank, um, or what have you. So let's take a look and see how you might be able to use some of these ideas to beautify the eyesores in your garden. And how do you kind of make it disappear so it's not always in your eyesight whenever you're walking by, driving home, or looking out the window, and all you see is those ugly green septic tanks staring you right in the face? So one of the techniques that we are going to utilize is depth. We're going to be planting a, a plant palette of four to five plants in this entire area. We're going to be doing strategic masses throughout the area to create a nice woven harmony, a nice kind of um, unified energy, that union of these different, uh, of a, a rather small plant palette, you will naturally just be detracting attention away from those septic areas. So that is huge. If you're trying to hide something, plant a lot of the same kinds of plants all around that area in different clumps and you will naturally just detract energy away from that eyesore. So that was one of the th one of the key ideas that I had in mind with my planting plan. Now, as you can see behind me, the setting is very much a woodland garden setting back here. So I specifically chose plants that are absolutely key components of a woodland type garden. That way, the planting scheme is going to look natural and that's going to also help to minimize the impact of what looks unnatural, AKA those nasty green things back there. So that was the second thing that I really wanted to keep in mind. And a third key component that I wanted to keep in mind was, so I still have yard that goes beyond that septic area. So I didn't want to block the energy of my yard. I want to allow the energy to continue to flow. So that helped me choose plants that were number one, going to be rather short in stature. Number two, going to have sort of a wispy, airy energy about them. So having all of these different constraints, when you're trying to beautify an eyesore, you need to think about what are your goals, what are the constraints, and by doing that, you can really narrow down your total plant palette, and that helps you to make much faster, easier decisions on what plants you want to actually incorporate in that area. Then the next best thing to do is draw your drawing, make a plan. So in my plan, I've made the nice drawing, it's about 35 feet wide and about 25 feet deep. I've drawn out my septic area. I've listed the five plants that I'm going to be planting in here. In this area, only gonna be planting five different plants. I'm gonna be planting Alchemilla mollis aussi, Cisrinchium lucerne, Schizocrium standing ovation, Physotegia pink manners, and Carex blue bunny. Now, as I write them out, I'm also incorporating the height of each plant, the width of each plant, and one or two defining features of that plant, which help me to understand where I should best situate them in my garden. For instance, the Cisrinchium lucerne, it only grows around eight to 10 inches tall. It has a very nice kind of grassy, almost iris-like foliage that produces blooms in late spring, early summertime. And then once I have all that information laid out, then what I've done is I go and place numbers on my planting scheme to represent each of those five different plants. That helps me to create a really nice visualization of where I'm gonna be planting them, how, they could, how they're going to be grouped together, and it's also, going to be help, it's also going to help me to understand the repeating nature of my planting scheme so that I can ensure that I have a good variety of each of those five plants kind of in each of the quadrants of my garden bed that I'm gonna be planting out. And it's also gonna help you just actually execute the planting much more quickly and efficient, efficiently. So tomorrow I'm gonna to go pick up my plants at the nursery. I'll show you guys what they look like and then we'll get planting. Do a little research, finding a native plant nursery in your region. That 
highly recommend it. You can find great quality plants that will work in your region. So right now for me, it is the middle of fall, um, and I think that's a great time to take on projects like that. That being said, you really need to ensure that you're giving yourself about a four to six week window before the ground in your region really freezes for good. Um, that way your plants, you know, you plant them and your plants have an opportunity to establish their root system and get situated in the garden bed before the ground really does stay cold. You can of course take these projects on in the spring, but that's gonna require more maintenance in the terms of watering, making sure your small plants are watered throughout the summertime. Planting in the fall is much more, uh, much less labor intensive, I tend to find. All right, so we made it back home. Oh, we got all of our plants. Now let me show you guys what these plugs look like. Pop one out. Always a good sign when they're nice and rooted. That is a sign of a high quality plant. So now that I got all my plants here, I got my design. Next step to do is to take my flats and just start placing all of the plants in my planting, in my planting space um, and just laying them out so then I can have them all ready and just go dig them, plant them up real quick, real quick. Then you just start to get everything laid out. The hard part here is to make sure that you're not stepping on the little plugs as you're laying them out. I've stepped on a few, but that's okay. Now, once you get everything laid out, then you just start getting them planted in the ground. Now, you're definitely gonna be doing some cutting and pasting, some editing to your planting scheme as you get planting. It's just part of the process. So always consider purchasing a few more plants than you think you might need. That way you can add more in, take some out, utilize them how you really want to, and you won't find yourself shorthanded with not enough plant material. Well, all right, kind of hard to tell, but I just got done planting up all of those plugs. Got about 400 plugs planted in about 90 minutes. So to review, if you have a problem area that you're trying to hide, an eyesore in your garden that you want to make beautiful, step one, define what the problem is. Could be as simple as, it's an, I have an AC unit that I want to hide, and the soil is really bad and rocky, clayey, I only get early morning sunlight. I have very little access to water, all right? So define what those problems are. Then define what your objective is. Hiding the AC unit, simple as that. Providing three seasons of interest. Creating food for the wildlife, for the pollinators. Define what your objectives are. Then locate a nursery a nurseryman that you can trust, someone that you can have an open communication with, someone that you can tell what your problems are, what your objectives are, and ask them for solutions, ask them for their help, ask them if they can provide large trays like I have sourced for my planting scheme right here. And then once you have a reliable nursery with someone that you communicate with, someone that can get you good plants at a decent price, start sourcing some ideas. Go to Botanical Gardens, search online, get some inspiration, start accumulating all these different ideas, get them on paper, draw out what you want to accomplish, draw out the space. It can be chicken scratch like my drawing, it can be prof more professional done on a computer, whatever makes sense for you. Then execute your plan. It's really, not that hard. If you go at it systematically, that's how a professional gardener would do it. That's how I like to do it. And I think it is a way that can work for you if you are trying to change an eyesore into a beautiful garden. Just start step by step. Start with one next section of the garden and then move on to the next section. When I moved into my home, I had lots of different eyesores all over the place. And I started with the ones that bothered me the most. It's like every day I'd drive home, I'd see that, it bugged me. That was the first thing I would do. And then I have less and less things that bug me now after living here for about two and a half years. So I think with that, I'll end the video today. Once everything has grown in, in like two or three years, I'll do a follow-up video. Maybe next summer I'll do a follow-up video to show you guys how the progress has been going and how much more beautiful this little section of my septic area has become. Anyways, hope you found this video helpful, a little bit insightful, maybe inspirational, um, something to take away. 
Hope, hope you had something to take away from it. Anyways, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below if you'd like to share your experiences with other gardeners that are here on our Plant Vibrations channel. Think about subscribing, share this video with someone else that might need a little inspiration and a little bit of a nudge to get their project underway. Anyways, I'll catch you guys soon. Ciao.